Warning, the driving situations and stories in this video are for entertainment purposes only. In no way should this be taken as driving advice. On today's show, I'll talk about the psychology of changing lanes, which I just did. We'll talk about 3D printing, and I get in a little race. Stick around, you're on the 405. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've all had your coffee. I'm your host, Rex. That's W-R-E-C-K-S. Don't read too much into that. Today, I want to talk about a couple of things that I've learned in my literally thousands of hours driving on the 405. Over the past five years, I've driven all the way down the 405 to work every day, every work day. And I've learned a lot of things, noticed a lot of behavior, strange behavior sometimes, and there's a lot of it going on right now, a lot of people changing lanes. One thing I've noticed a lot is that people hate it when you pass them. They hate it when you get in front of them. Whether you're bothering them or putting them out at all or not, people just pretty much hate it when you get in front of them. So what they do when you wanna change lanes is they try not to let you over like this guy right here. And there's a broken down car. All right. Life on the 405. It's just a normal day out here today. So you'll notice when someone's gonna change lanes, a lot of times what they'll do subconsciously is they'll start to veer over towards the lane that they're changing into. And whether they know it or not, most people do that. And you can almost always tell when somebody's getting ready to change lanes because they do that. In fact, a lot of times you probably subconsciously think about it even before they signal when you see them veering over. So what happens is a lot of people get offended by getting passed up or when someone gets in front of them and uh, they'll hit the gas so they can't let you, so you can't get in. So usually what I do is try not to make it too obvious that I'm gonna change lanes until I'm ready to do it until there's a space big enough. Try not to veer over to the side of the lane. I'll stay in the middle of the lane. And when I know there's plenty of space, then I'll hit my signal and, and get over. But if you start edging towards that, that side of the lane, then people are gonna bunch up. That's not always the case unless there's a lot of traffic like there is right now, but. This looks like a good time to take a little detour. Dude. I like to try and guess which car is going to go faster. In this case, I'm going with the Nissan in the left lane. I think I chose the wrong lane, but look, we'll see. Yep. Oh, oh. Here goes the Merc. Oh, I may have been wrong. Yeah, looks like I was wrong. And I'm glad I chose right. See, I'm wrong, I was wrong, so I chose the right lane. But I thought I was wrong. But if I wasn't wrong, then I would have been wrong. So I chose right. This route is a lot more fun than sitting on the 405, even if it takes an extra couple of minutes, which on a day like today, it's probably not.
walking by the traffic over there on that freeway. It looks like I made the right choice in taking this little detour. <clears throat> but now I gotta get back on. All right, so I'm being a little bit more uh, adventurous and maybe a little naughty more than I normally would be. No, really. I'm serious when I say that. But hey. YOLO, right? Right? <laughs> Just kidding. Now, what is going on up here? Looks like a lot of dust. I don't know if that... Oh, that must be from the all this dirt on the road. Well, I don't know where all this came from, but holy cow. Looks like the 405 just got turned into a country road. And wouldn't you know it, that's what's causing all the backed up traffic. So one thing I do try to do when I'm going to change lanes <clears throat> is I try to change the lanes when traffic is speeding up rather than when it's slowing down. And you'll see why in a minute here. I'm going to need to get over to the left here. But with this much traffic, if I try to get over to the left while people are stopping, because they tend to stop faster, then they, people tend to be closer to the car in front of them when they stop, so there's gonna be less room. But when traffic starts moving, there tends to be gaps in between each car because uh, the cars start off a lot slower than they stop. So what I'll do is I'll wait until the moment when the traffic is actually speeding up in the next lane over, and I'll pick a spot and then I'll, I'll get over. So I recently got a 3D printer. Have you heard of these? So a 3D printer, for those of you who are not familiar with what they are, it's very similar to a regular printer that prints out ink. However, what it does is it prints out little thin layers of a plastic type substance and it builds layer upon layer until you have a full 3D object. And they have these uh, consumer level devices now, 3D printers, that you can get in a pretty decent price range. And print out some pretty amazing objects. Very, very detailed objects. So I recently got a MakerBot Replicator 2 3D printer, and it can print uh, very, very small layers, which gives you better, better quality, better resolution. I believe it's 100 microns is the uh, the layer size that it can print. But what you do is uh, it's a desktop printer, so it actually will sit on your on your desk. It's bigger than a regular ink printer, but it'll sit on your desk, connect it to your computer, and you can plug 3D uh, 3D computer files into it, and it accepts most popular 3D formats, and it sends it to the printer, and it prints out an object. So I brought a couple of objects to show you. This right here is a, uh, a set of gears. This is a uh, called Nautilus gears. And this is an object, I got a model for this on their website, on the Thingiverse website, which is, I believe, thingiverse.com. And it's a website where people can actually take their inventions and their 3D models and share them with everyone else so that they can print out all these objects for free. And there are thousands and thousands of objects. Another object I printed out, this was just a test, but if you've ever played the game Settlers of Catan, you might recognize a piece similar to this. This is a three-dimensional piece. If you've played the game, it comes with these cardboard hex pieces that you put together. $40 game, and all it is is a bunch of cardboard inside, which just feels like kind of a ripoff. So somebody on Thingiverse decided to make a full set of 3D models for the game pieces, so you can replace your game pieces with actual 3D models. So that's what this is here very intricate. Now this is, I printed out using a translucent uh, filament that comes with the printer because I haven't got my various colors that I ordered yet. Uh, but the, the solid colors actually look a little better because the translucent filament, you can actually see the lines in there. Although you can't feel them, it's really smooth. So that's really cool. Really looking forward to printing out some new stuff and inventing some of my own things to print out including a game that I have designed that I actually want to print out pieces for. So that's going to be exciting. So my question to you is, what would you print out if you had a 3D printer? So uh, I'd like to know what you think about that and what you would print. So leave your comment in the comment section and let me know and maybe we'll talk about it.
Well, my exit's coming up. That means I'm out of time. If you like the show, please give it a like. And if you have any comments or feedback, leave those, please, in the comment section. And to be appraised of when the next episode comes out, go ahead and subscribe by clicking on this Toyota here. Thanks for riding along with me today on the 405, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.